many of you guys know, I've been in Africa the last few months. Um, and for me, Africa was really a life-changing experience. Um, you guys are probably wondering why I'm wearing the dress and why I kind of look like this, but um, the organization I went with was um, a charity organization, so they're basically Mennonites, and they wanted everyone to dress basically the same so that there's unity and there's not, um, so that there's no questions um, if people were wondering. Um, say, thank you all for praying for me. A lot of the time in Africa, I felt you guys' prayers a lot. Um, there was many times when I needed God and um, praying to Him and just seeking His face was just really helpful and seeing Him come through every single time. God really worked at my heart. He showed me how important mission is. We don't need to go to foreign fields. We can be missionaries right here at home. Um, today was really neat, actually. I met with, um, I don't remember his name, but he's doing a homeless ministry in Carmichael. And I was like, man, that's so neat. Like, doing missionary at home, we don't have to go out to the foreign fields. Missionaries here at home, doing things for God while we're here at home um, is really important. God doesn't want us to just stay back. He wants us to go boldly before him and encourage to tell people about his love. Um, a little bit more about Africa. The first two weeks I was there, I think for me were basically the hardest because everything was so different, everything was so new. Um, the food for in general was really different for me. Um, the people in Africa, they eat a lot of starch, so they eat a lot of flour and corn. Um, a lot of the kids are really malnutrition, so a lot of them, as you guys are going to see in the pictures, are they their stomachs are really bloated, and then they have orange hair too. It's really, it's really sad. It, it almost made me cry a few times. Um, the Af the houses in Africa are mud huts that they make themselves. The um, the roofs are made out of grass. They're a very poor place, but I think more than more than the need of money, I think they need God's, God's love because if they have God's love in them, then God will bless them. But without that, I mean, life is, life is pointless. Um, the weather in Africa is really, really hot. I remember I went to Romania this last summer and I was like, man, I've been to Romania, it's hot during the summer. I was like, I'll be fine. And the lady on the plane sitting right next to me, she's like, She's like, well, welcome to the hottest place on the face of the earth. I was like, yeah, whatever, it's not going to be that hot. And <laughs> as soon as we got off the plane, we felt like we were entering like a sauna. It was so <laughs> hot. And we took our sweaters, our shoes, flip-flops, and it was it was hard at first. The first day, we, we changed maybe three times just because we were sweating so much because we weren't used to it. Um, a verse I wanted to read with you guys is Romans 10, verse 14. It says, how then can they tell, how can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? Going out, going out of our comfort zone shows, shows me how much I have, how much I, how much we don't need, how much stuff we have. Um, we need, I mean, if nobody's going to go, then who's going to go to tell these people about God, to tell them about his love for them? They're all, they're all like us. Like she was saying, why, why did God privilege us? Why are we selected that we can know about His love? I mean, we could have been just like them. Only God's grace, and I think that that grace that God gave us, we need to share with everybody else. Another verse I want to read is in Matthew six, verse twenty. Matthew six, verse twenty says. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Yeah. Many times here in the States, I've realized for myself is, we put so, so much value, so much treasure on the things of this earth, and they all, being in Africa, being away from everything, made me notice that nothing, nothing is important. And the only thing that's important is what we do for God. When, when we're gonna get to the judgment seat of God, what is He gonna? What is He? What are we gonna tell Him? Oh, we had a life of fun. We had, we had this and we had that. He's not. He's not gonna care about any of that. He's gonna care about what we did for Him. I think my favorite part. I told a few people. I think my favorite part of Africa was school ministry. We went out to the schools and we had like a program. 
Sunday saying, share testimonies and um, preach there. And afterwards, just being able to go out between the crowd, the people that were there, sometimes even to up to 3,000 people, and just going there and talking to students, people my own age, and just like their struggles, maybe my struggles and the things I came, they were going through. And just being able to go and to talk to them, and they they were really eager. Their hearts were really open. Like they were wanting, they needed somebody to go and tell them, and then they would believe. Many of them, this one girl in particular, she this girl shared the gospel with her, and she gave her heart to Jesus that night. And I was like, wow, that is so cool. And so many other times it happened too. I hope that the burden that God has laid on my heart, the vision of God's heart, will grasp your heart for missions too. It's so important. The Great Commission is to go out and tell everyone about His love, about God's love for us. God loves you. God loves the people in Africa and Asia and India and Indonesia and Greece and Romania and Mexico. And God wants them all to know about His love. But how can they know about His love if we don't go tell them? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.